This video is intended for furthering the discussion started at our Alita Battle Angel, and therefore it is recorded in English. All shall suffer. So Salem, and yes, I will pronounce this as Salem. An orbital elevator of epic proportions. In the Gun manga it is placed at Kansas City, deep into continental United States. In the Alita Battle Angel movie it floats above what was Panama City. It is said that Panama option is geographically correct, while Kansas is not. Well, it actually goes deeper. So in my infinite senility I have forgotten, imagine that, uh, the difference between geosynchronous and geostationary orbit. For a satellite, the geostationary orbit is achievable at very specific circumstances, caused by the loss of gravity. Basically an object will orbit another object, so that orbital plane would contain the center of mass of both objects. If this condition is not met, the orbit will shift, so that it would meet, or probably the poor thing would just burn in the atmosphere. When considering the orbital elevator or space elevator, we are speaking of a structure that has to be stationary, otherwise it does not quite serve its purpose, doesn't it? So we cannot just hand it to wherever we want at a geosynchronous orbit. It would sway like mad, changing all three coordinates all the time. Thus, an orbital elevator can be hung only on a geostationary orbit, which strictly coexists with equator, which is quite far from Panama City, as we can see quite clearly. Thus, neither manga nor movie actually put Salem where it should be. If we consider the original manga canon, that is, originally there was only Salem with its orbital neighbor Jeru as the counterweight. And this scene clearly could not contain its orbit, wouldn't it? Well, we'll get to it. For now, let's look at what the system actually looks like in the current manga canon. You see, there are actually two elevators connected by the orbital ring. This is a complete structure, with center of mass being one and the same with the center of mass of Earth. And this becomes interesting. Now this system actually can maintain its position, if it was to rotate in correct alignment with the axis of Earth, maintaining essentially a zero-height geostationary orbit. But what about the original design and Panama-placed movie design? Well, I must say that all is not lost even here. You see, currently we were essentially considering only so-called Keplerian orbits. These orbits are natural and can be theoretically maintained without any significant course corrections. As for non-Keplerian orbits, there's the interesting stuff. Theoretically, nobody forces an object not to fly above a single point of a planet, but the gravity itself. So this pool created by shift between orbital plane and center of mass of the planet can be corrected by application of constant force to compensate. It can be pretty much any propulsion, and in futuristic world of nanate-based bodies, huge space fleets and Dyson spheres, I see no reason to suggest that such a propulsion energy source does not exist. So there you go, everything is not as bad as it seems. Have fun, eat your chocolates, and hate the enemies of humanity.